Hello, I'm Steve Wiebe. And I'm Walter Day. And, and you're watching Groovy TV. Right I'm here with Steve Weeby and Walter Day. We are here at the 2013 Denver Comic Con. How are you, sirs? Doing great. Thanks for having us on your te television. Oh, I'm freaking stoked to have you guys. I love the movie, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. This guy is a star, actually, the guy in the stripes. What movie? What movie yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> Don't you remember that? The King of Kong, right? Oh, That's the one. of course. I actually got King of Kong as a Christmas present from a buddy of mine. Believe it or not, you guys were a Christmas present. <laughs> well, I just I just saw online a day or two ago that the King of Kong is considered the sixth greatest documentary, Six. right behind right behind Godzilla versus Megalon. <laughs> that was a hell of a documentary, too. Yes, it sure was. <laughs> all right, so what are you guys working on now? What's all happening? We're just promoting the new Twin Galaxy site here. Um, so there's two new owners. Walter's a consultant. He forever. He'll never leave this job, but um, so they've got a promotion here to get people signed up on the database, so you can be a member of Twin Galaxies. And I'm going to be going for a Donkey Kong World Record here in a, another 15, 20 minutes, and he's going to referee, and so that's the deal. So how do you successfully referee this? Oh well, anyway, I guess they just watch him. <laughs> and uh, see, the thing is, is uh, Steve is an artist, and he's uh, an athlete. And people don't realize that that same mind-body coordination you use in pitching a fastball or throwing a or throwing a touchdown pass, that same coordination of mind and body is used in doing Donkey Kong on the highest level. And that's where Steve's at. Steve is one of this very elite group, elite group of people who can actually perform the, the all the actions necessary to get a high score on Donkey Kong and reach what they call the kill screen. Right. So I will watch him, I will verify the score, and he will try and reach what's called the kill screen. And it's a very difficult job. It's two hours of non-stop focus. Sure. And you know, when a, when a shortstop when a shortstop plays shortstop in baseball and he wins the Golden Glove Award, he hit, that's because he's had as few errors as possible in the course of the season. So maybe the top guy might have eight errors, 12 hours, 12 errors, 15 hours, what have you. And the same dynamics are involved in playing Donkey Kong. He's the equivalent to the best shortstop that's ever happened because the game only allows him four errors in the course of the game. Can you imagine the greatest, can you imagine Pee Wee Reese only having gotten four errors in the course of a season? Oh my God. Well, that's what he has to do. He has to maintain mind-body focus over about two and a half hours and have no less than four errors for him to reach the kill screen. So it's a miracle. So what's going on in your head when you're playing and when you're at the like two hour mark? Well, I've, I've been there a lot, so I don't I actually get nervous or anything. Like before, when I was first getting to the kill screen, I would get a little tense. But now I get a more adrenaline because I'm seeing the end of the tunnel, so I actually have a, a better focus at the end. The problem is sometimes in the middle when you're kind of not you're not close to the beginning and not and far away from the end. So you're kind of like in this marathon, in the middle of the marathon, you're kind of like drudging through your steps so but when I get closer to the finish line I get the adrenaline rush so it gets a, a easier Is there to any other video games like like console games or anything that you play for fun not a big console player but Donkey Kong Jr. was another one of mine that I played but um, but Donkey Kong's the main focus now with the with the documentary coming out there's so many players getting involved now there's people from Canada invading invading our country's database <laughs> And every time, so there's this uh, thing called the Kong Off that is in Denver, and the uh, co the owners of Twin Galaxies actually um, fa uh, coordinate this Kong Off event, it's, and we're up to the third Kong Off now. So that's going to happen in November. So all the best Donkey Kong players come together. Billy Mitchell will be there. There's Hank Chen, who's the current record holder. There's some Canadian players that are really good now. So that's going to happen in November. So that. So the, you're coming back for that? Yeah, I'll be there for that. So it's not a lot of time to do any other video games. I, I thought I wanted to try to get get a record on Popeye at one point, but with Donkey Kong being in the forefront, it's it's kind of the main thing that I would. If I'm going to play don any games, I'm going to play Donkey Kong. 
That's awesome. And what are you working on currently, sir? Well, I'm helping Twin Galaxies launch the new website. So even though we're talking about Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., Twin Galaxies is actually the historical home for all world records for com the history of competitive video game playing all the way back to the 70s. And for some novelty games, even back to the 30s, the 1930s. So Twin Galaxies is like the historical home of organized video game playing itself. And we just launched a new website, and that's why we're here, because Steve and I are helping Twin Galaxies introduce the public to this new state-of-the-art website. And people are, people are signing up here at our table and becoming members, because we're all starting by scratch. It's all starting from scratch again, because the old website wasn't really proper. It wasn't adequate for the incredible stature and importance of Twin Galaxies and its historical work that it's done. And I will make sure it's rolling beneath us while we talk about it. Well, that's great because people should come and join because if you're playing old console or new console or old school or arcade or Donkey Kong or even things older or the newest cutting edges on, uh, you know, Xbox One, this is your home. This is where you should submit your world records to okay. because we are the ones who verify them and then submit them to Guinness. So everybody who's watching this broadcast, be aware that if you want to get in the Guinness Book of World Records, Actually, it's called the Guinness World Record Book now. We will verify your scores at the Twin Galaxies website, and we will submit it to Guinness. Awesome, awesome. You know, when I was a kid, I submitted my Yars Revenge score, beat that sucker highest score ever from the Atari 2600. Nothing. I got nothing back. I was supposed to get a patch or something. Yeah, yeah well, we're more, we're more involved with the actual community. It means something to us when someone gets an accomplishment. We have certificates we issue. We, you know, we will do stories on them. They're posted on our website. It's a very, very involved organization that's there to completely support the glowing, amazing, the growing, amazing, dynamic global video game culture. And and the people who are watching this, they should be aware that they are an important part of this growing, amazing global video game culture and that an important part of that culture is just the drive to try and be the best, to excel, to try and be a world champion. And that's why we exist, to give you the honors you deserve and also create the rules that you need to perform under. So it's very important. So Twin Galaxies oh, yeah. plays a major role in the worldwide global video game culture. So what are a couple of your favorite games? Oh, well, I love the old games like Centipede and and you know, Frogger and Make Tracks, Donkey Kong I like, yeah. But I also like, I mean, I like some more recent games too, from Crazy Taxi to Hydro Thunder to uh, uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Nice. But I don't have a lot of time to play because I'm also trying to compose music. Steve and I are very similar, very similar. Yes. We have our love of the games, but the music is so important to us. Yes. The music is so basic to our psyche and who we are and what we consider the more important things that we want to bring into the world. I mean, we brought a lot of fun into the world and a lot of strangeness into the world too with our movies, but personally, Steve and me both want to see our music do something to uplift other people. That's awesome. So where can people get get the music? Well, I have a website at stevewebe.com and you can look in there. There's a playlist of uh, one of my CDs and then if you go to iTunes it's up on iTunes or Amazon.com he's still got to finish his I stuff. gotta finish it I'm, I've been very bad I keep yeah. thinking about it and I work so on it but I haven't done it <laughs> well now get on them we want to hear these tunes yeah well this is fun I'm glad that you guys are doing what you do and here's what I got to say also those of you people who watch groovy TV you should be thanking them for doing this because the culture is getting bigger and bigger, it's getting more dynamic, and the people who actually belly up to the bar and do things like create Groovy TV are actually the ones who are going to make this worldwide global video game culture what it is, and also preserve for history the importance of a lot of people's stories. So I want to thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Groovy TV is very important. We are honored to be a part of it today. It's a huge honor for me. I mean, it's a huge, I mean, I've watched the movie many, many times and you know, I've been playing games since I was 4 years old. So, <laughs> definitely appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are great. Thank you. Stephen Walter, Groovy, Denver Comic-Con 2013. Rock on.